better put on a smile and do this video for this daft YouTube mob. Hello everyone, welcome back to 67 Hail Hail. We're here for a brand new week. Sorry, I'm just I'm struggling to I'm struggling to get myself up for this a wee bit. You know, see when you're you've been on one of the leading radio stations in the whole of Australia and Sky Sports News in the past twenty four hours, um doing a YouTube video like this, it it just feels a wee bit beneath me, if I'm honest. I'm sorry if that hurts. Um I, no, I am I am still committed um to to you lot sorry to six. Yep, I can do that. Sorry, the uh, BT Sport just wanting me for coverage ahead of the Milan Derby tomorrow. Um I no I am still committed to to sixty seven heel hail and, and all of that stuff, yeah. So yeah, Sky Sports News earlier today. I have officially sold out a bit like Celtic Park. Not that you'll probably have seen the clip, given that it was on at like half six this morning and I've not seen it yet. I've seen plenty of David Martindale today, but no Hamish Carton. Um, but yeah, that's the way it goes. Um, genuinely for me, like pretty surreal to be asked onto Sky Sports News after Celtic won the league. So And it, and it does genuinely come from the channel um, growing to a stage uh, or going to this stage that it has, and that's obviously down to all you wonderful people. So yeah, that was all Pata in the intro. I'm going nowhere. 67 Hail Hail is still my bread and butter, a bit like the winning of trophies as Celtic's bread and butter. Shall we stop chatting about me and move on to more important things like the hat that I was wearing on Sunday's reaction video. Now, loads of you asking about it. I did promise that I would let you know where it is from, and there is indeed a link below in the description where you can get your own. Yeah. Just after we finished the video on Sunday, we headed off to Celtic Park, and it was pretty wild, I must say. So yeah, some, some great stuff there. Uh, people certainly enjoying themselves um, and just basking in the glory of Celtic. Uh, I was in back there yesterday for that aforementioned sky piece and it was suddenly um, spotless, as you can see. A hell of a job done by some legends to clean away all of the cans and the bottles and just the general mess of fireworks and flares and all of that stuff to, to leave Celtic Park back in a pristine condition. It seems like it's not only titles that we clean up on. Very good, that wasn't my pattern, that was several people pointed out that on Twitter. Now, um, yeah, some great stuff. Uh, Celtic are champions again. You probably don't need any evidence of that being the case, but just in case, here is the league table. We are now 13 points clear with four games to go. If we win all four, we can still finish on 107 points more than the Invincible season. That starts at Ibrox on Saturday in what is, of course, a totally meaningless fixture. Now, so much reaction to the game on Sunday, as you would expect and as you will know, it has gone um, pretty crazy. It's been manic. Um, so much stuff that I'd be here until like tomorrow evening if I went through it all, all the various social media posts, um, you know, videos that have gone up, interviews, 
quotes from interviews. Uh, I'm not going to do all of that because you will have seen you know, the vast majority of it already. And it is Tuesday by now. Um, I just really want to capture the feeling of the last couple of days um, in this video. One thing I do want to mention, though, that kind of covers that is... Uh, an 18-minute video that Celtic shared shortly after full-time on Sunday of the celebrations on the pitch at Tynecastle in front of the 11 or 1,200 Celtic fans. And in particular, the bit where the supporters at Tynecastle just started singing all of the player songs that we've grown to love this season and last. And as they were doing it, the player in question would then kind of walk to the front and take the acclaim of said supporters. So we had like Jota, Abada, Kyogo, Haksabanovic, Bernabe, Moy. I even heard Super Joe Hart, um, Jojo, Super Joe, Super Joe Hart, which kind of doesn't really fit. And also I've never actually heard that being sung at a game. So yeah, it was getting um, very crazy on Sunday, but I love that part and just that video in general. Um, genuinely it's a must watch it's like as I say nearly 20 minutes long and it's just immediately on from the full time whistle all of the players celebrating the the you know the songs been sung by the support and uh, I think there's a few interviews in there as well so it's, it's really really enjoyable there's been loads of stuff um, that's gone out on Celtic's YouTube channel uh, stuff from back at Celtic Park interviews with players um, unique angle footage and it's just amazing to kind of sit back and, and watch it all. A very enjoyable few days. Being back at Celtic Park was brilliant. You've already seen some of the clips. I dare say a, a fair few of you would have been back at the stadium and yeah, amazing to see the, the smiles on, on people's faces and just the amount of people there as well. When you're on the ground, it's very difficult to get a gauge on that but this image is just fantastic and really kind of um shows you the the amount of people that were there and there's actually far more there in the back that the photo doesn't even cover there was people back at the emirates uh, arena with a very good view of things going on um it was totally wild and uh kind of strange because yeah we did it last year after we won the league but like i don't remember us doing it when we won the league last time at Tynecastle in 2017. I dare say there were some people at Celtic Park, but I don't think there was that number of people. So it's kind of um, another example of what Ange and this uh, team have done and the bond that they have with the support. It's like nothing I've ever felt supporting a club. Um, yeah, amazing to see the, the smiles in people's faces. Another thing I wanted to point out was... A number of the players driving away from Celtic Park and obviously being flanked by like tens of Celtic fans. But even the fact that they were all driving home, I thought was interesting. It doesn't seem like many of them will have had like maybe alcohol at all on Sunday, apart from the stuff that O was trying to spray at them inside the, the Tyne Castle changing rooms. Very much a team who are already looking to their next challenge. Of course, they're going to you know, enjoy this title success and they've got a fair bit of en enjoyment still to come in terms of this. But um, I think they're already looking at next Saturday and um, they're not going to be going on a three-day trip to Dublin is kind of what I'm getting at. Yeah. So it's 11 league titles in 12 years. It's 17 in 23. It's already 16 trophies in the past seven seasons. There's a fair chance that becomes 17 in seven seasons in a few weeks' time. It's an incredible period to support Celtic with like more glory um, over like a confined period than we can ever really remember, certainly for some of you that were alive in the late 60s, early 70s, it's maybe similar, but I kind of feel like this is even more amazing in terms of the amount of trebles uh, and league titles we seem to be winning in succession. But having had all of that success and still having that success, I don't know how you feel, but that title win on Sunday felt just as good as the first. And I've been trying to kind of work out why that's the case. I think if you won a league title every single week, it would maybe start to feel a little bit old. But I think they're, they're spread out enough 
um, and the trophies in general are spread out enough for them to still feel um, extremely significant and special. I also think there's an element of us all enjoying one of the greatest times ever to support Celtic, perhaps the second greatest to, you know, the Lisbon Lions period and not wanting it to end. And because you keep winning, you never want the feeling to end. So there's almost a feeling like you want to celebrate the next one um, even more than the last. Um, it's a weird thing to put your put your finger on because onlookers would look at the fact that we've run away with this league um, and it is, you know, 11 and 12 years, 17 this century and think, yeah, it's just another title. Why are you going crazy? Why are thousands of people turning up at Celtic Park? Um, but it's not onlookers that are part of this. It's the Celtic support, Ange and the players and... Um, yeah, something really, really special happening at Celtic. I think we felt it for a long time, um, but it's still happening and, and days like Sunday are really um, memorable as a result. So, yeah, I loved it. Um, we're not going to keep winning every trophy going for the rest of eternity, I don't think, but there's certainly um, many more trophies to come under Ange and I think we all just want to make this amazing period last for as long as it can. So yeah, a brilliant, brilliant weekend. As I say, I know we're on to Tuesday now. Just a, a couple of kind of recent bits of news as we kind of look forward to the summer a wee bit. Now, I know Ange was was asked about that. I think Joe Hart was another one asked by the BBC and he was very keen to point out that, you know, our season isn't over. We can still win another trophy. We've still got a derby to come, trophy day, etc. Um but I think as, as fans, you are almost looking you know, ahead to the future. I mean, the club's announcing things to do with the, the trip to Asia as well. It just adds to that feeling. On that note, they have today announced that we'll play Yokohama F Marinos on July the 19th in Nissan Stadium, Yokohama, at 11 a.m. Scottish time. Now, Japan, eight hours ahead, so that's 7 p.m. in Japan. So a night game over in Japan, a kind of... Uh, What's 11 um, morning, I guess. I don't know why I struggled with that. Um, obviously, a big one for Ange. Dies in Maida as well. Uh, Tomoki Awata, who is still officially a Marinos player, but he will sign permanently for us in the summer. So it will be he'll be going back there as well. Obviously, a, a number of Japanese players as well. Um, we we'll also confirm we're playing Wolves in Suwon, South Korea in uh, July the 26th, so a week after the Marinos game. So I would guess that we'll have Marinos and probably a, a weekend game in Japan and then Wolves in South Korea. The new Premiership season kicks off on August the 5th and 6th, so the trip to Asia is kind of near the end of pre-season and uh, the Champions League draw, which of course we are now part of, uh, for the group stage is on August the 31st. Yeah, it's um, it's going to be interesting next few weeks because the the league is obviously won now and we have a, a Scottish Cup coming up at the start of June and between now and then we still have four league games to play as well with records still to be gone for. Um, big one on Saturday at Ibrox, I know I joked about it earlier, but it is still a, a big game and it would be really nice to cap off a season of dominance against our rivals by beating them at their own place. Um, they're one of the few teams to take points off us this season and it was at Ibrox, so it'd be nice to go there and win that game. And um, yeah, we're going to start building up to that one later in the week on the channel a hell of a lot happening, actually, as far as the channel is concerned. You'll be pleased to know. Hoping to have Scott McDonald back on soon. We're also at the women's game at Celtic Park on Thursday night. Celtic versus Glasgow City. Uh, we'll be doing a bit of content at that game. Also, maybe build in a bit of a Rangers preview into that video as well. There's a big uh, Scott Brown and Mikael Lustig Hydro event next week that we'll be at as well and much more um, to kind of get involved with. So it's a marvellous time to support Celtic. Um, pretty hectic for us all. But um, hopefully you've had a, a wonderful weekend. And yeah, I think it's fair to say the dust is kind of starting to settle a little bit on what was a, a glorious 
few days and we're all just kind of coming to terms with another amazing achievement by this Celtic team. It's four trophies now under Ange Postacoglu and there's many more to come. 